Good morning. It is 8.25 a.m. on Friday, May the 7th, 2021. I'm Christiana Ellis, and I've been up for a little bit, sort of, kind of, it's, uh, you know, it's weird. This is five more minutes. This is definitely one of those days where, like, I got up extra early, and I watched the new Star Wars The Bad Batch, then I went back to bed, and then I was poking around, and now I'm kind of up, and so on. But, you know, time to get to work. So, uh, that means doing the video and all. I got a very cuddly dog this morning. Um, which is great. Because he, he's cuddly in both senses. In the sense that he likes to cuddle and in that he is fun uh, for cuddling. Um, yeah, anyway, uh... Uh, Bad Batch, it's pretty good. Um, I had a vague recollection that a character in this episode had been, you know, like the show kind of hinted at maybe we knew who this guy was and I had to uh, Google him. But then it's like, oh yeah, he was in Clone Wars too. Yeah. Anyway, um, I'm, I'm continuing to like that show. Uh, I think it's well developed so far. I'm a little curious where they're going with it like what is the only like the only hesitation I really have is also a hesitation with like the next couple of Star Wars show things that we know they're doing we've got an Obi-Wan show we've got a Cassian Andor show the guy from Rogue One but I feel like one of the biggest problems with Star Wars stuff right now, I think, is over-connectedness and an unwillingness to explore new territory instead of just constantly making sure to go back and color in and fill in all of the possible empty spaces you can imagine in the existing knowledge base because, like, I'll watch, I mean, I'll watch both shows, but like an Obi-Wan show, I'll give a pass just on the basis of Ewan McGregor is so enormously entertaining to watch as uh, Obi-Wan. Um, and then the Cassian Andor show, like I'll watch it and I like him and I like the character, but I won't, what I'm looking to the Star Wars producers and say like, why do you keep telling us stories we know the ending to already? Like, I guess The Mandalorian is an exception there. We don't really know exactly where that's going. But, you know, I had the same issue. Like, I won't spoil the ending of Season 2 exactly, except to just say anyone who has seen it will know what I mean by this, is that it's frankly hard to feel happy about what happens at the end because we know what happens after that. And so, like... It's complicated, and um, yeah, I don't know. So I'm enjoying it, but I just feel like I I would rather they go on and continue to explore new areas and allow the universe to, you know, develop some uh, ragged edges and uh, you know new <laughs> new history instead of only just. Um, only just continuing to recirculate and, you know, turn back in on itself, become this little Ouroboros. Um, the other thing I did yesterday, I watched, I, you know, I wasn't actually even intending to talk about Star Wars today. I was going to say I've watched a little bit of the, the show Debris. It's a, some network TV show. I don't even remember which one. I hardly ever watch network TV anymore, so it's like... <laughs> I don't even remember, but I watched it on Hulu, uh, which is kind of a new show in the vein of like Fringe, where you've got people doing investigations of supernatural phenomena that seem sci-fi related, and in this case are related to pieces of debris that have crashed to Earth from what is believed to be a wrecked spaceship. And it has weird properties and does weird things. And there's conspiracies and all of that. 
And I don't know. I mean, I've watched like half of what's currently available, and I don't. I I think I'm gonna maybe give it a pass for a little while and not continue just because there's lots of other things that I think I would enjoy more. And this one, it just sort of it feels very sort of rote, like by the, very by the numbers. Um, I feel like I've seen this show before when it was French, um, and I'm not really getting the vibe from it that it's doing anything new or interesting with that. I also uh, watched Who Dreams for the first time, which is amazing. It's uh, very good. It's a movie that, uh, like, you know, it's a documentary about two kids uh, going to uh, you know, high school that are wannabe NBA stars, and it was made in the mid-90s. And so, uh, you know, if you if you haven't seen it, you, should, you also should watch it because it's very good. Um, anyway, I'll leave it there, and I will talk to you all tomorrow for five more minutes. Uh, let's see.